français, la, la genèse de l'évangile et la question évolution versus uh, création. Okay, you get that as a free gift. And if you buy anything, we also give you en français, le Dieu existe-t-il ou le livre d'où vient la femme, la femme de Cain? Bonne question, hein? So, uh, malheureusement, on continue en anglais. Okay. So, if I go too fast, uh, is there a translation? Okay, I will speak slower. I see no light flashing. Oh, <laughs> when I see that, it means not okay. Ah, okay, I ding. Okay, good. Uh, we live in, my wife and I live in Pierrefonds. Okay, that's just not too far from the flooding. And uh, so it's not going to affect us, but uh, they're much more, they're much better prepared than they were two years ago. Uh, and a lot of uh, build up of dikes and things like that. So it, I don't think it'll be as bad, but uh, there's a lot of people affected by all that water. It's, uh, that's amazing. So we're going to talk about dinosaurs. Anybody heard about dinosaurs? Uh, oh, the light is on already. <laughs> well, I'm just so excited. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, I feel like I'm winning something when the light goes on. <laughs> so, you've heard about dinosaurs. Exactly, I did too, I did too, that's great. So, um, we're going to talk a little bit about dinosaurs and the Bible and how they uh, work together. And um, so, dinosaurs, well, we are... Uh, we love dinosaurs. Now that's supposed to be an animation on the, bo the bottom with the dancing dinosaurs. Is it dancing? No. Okay, we'll come back to that. So, come back to that. So, everybody loves dinosaurs. Why, is, why should we talk about dinosaurs at a church? Why should we talk about it? What's, it, what's the connection with the Bible and with the, the gospel? Well, obviously, dinosaurs, whenever they talk about dinosaurs, they also talk about millions of years ago. 65 million years ago, they said the dinosaurs were destroyed by some kind of asteroid. Well, the Bible doesn't give us 65 million years to work with. And so we have a problem here. So either the Bible is wrong, or the dating of the dinosaurs is wrong. And um, they cannot both be correct at the same time. But one of the ways that uh, you can turn Christians into away from the Bible and one or in this particular case I'm going to show you how you can turn a Christian into a Muslim is by not talking about dinosaurs and evolution. Interesting. In National Post uh, magazine there was an article about this woman and about Joy who says she remembers how her questions about dinosaurs and evolution were dismissed and rejected by Bible scholars. Unfortunately, that made her agnostic. And uh, she thought, well, the Bible doesn't have any answers. But the Bible does have a lot of answers if we know how to look at it. And this eventually turned her, or uh, somebody who was a Muslim, encouraged her to become a Muslim. And now she wears the hijab. It's not so popular in Quebec, but it's... Um, this is what happened by not addressing these issues. Because for sure, you're going to run to them, uh, run into the dinosaurs and evolution all the time. So where do we begin with this? Well, one of the things we begin with is the Bible. We take the Bible as the Word of God. It is God's revelation to us. God has spoken, inspired men and women, men to write the words, and so we have the, the Holy Scriptures. And this is what we call the Word of God. What does the Bible tell us? Well, the book of Genesis tells us that there were six days in which God made everything. Now, we're talking real, normal, everyday six days. There are no billions and millions of years in the Bible. And that everything that God had made was très bon, very good. In fact, yeah, it would, okay. so um, great. Okay. Now we're live. Okay. So everything was very good. And so at this time, there was no death. There was no animal eating for people and no people eating for animals, which was good. Everything was good. So, so we had everything very good. But it didn't stay that way. And then, of course, it became very bad. 
very bad like so. So, of course, we see an apple. The Bible doesn't say it was an apple, but Adam and Eve rebelled against God and said, no, we're not going to listen to you. We're going to listen to Satan. And it was a direct rebellion against the command of God. And that brought what? What was the consequence of Adam's sin? Death. Exactly. So when you see death happening, when you see people who die, it's a consequence of Adam's sin. So is there any evidence for the Bible? Absolutely. Death is a very powerful evidence that God has judged the world, and we see its consequences every day. So God made everything. It was good. Then it wasn't. Then it was very bad. But what do I do with the evidences for, you know, we talked about the strata in the rocks. We talked about the fossils. These, they say, for example, Grand Canyon took billions of years to form. And in it are all these fossils. Well, then what do we do? If there were billions of years of evolution before Adam and Eve, before it was very good, then that means that the Bible is not correct. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. But if death was always there, going back millions and billions of years, therefore then death was not a result of anybody's sin. It was just the way everything works. And in fact, if you say God did it, started all of this, then you're saying God is the one who started death over millions and billions of years. You make him responsible for why things are bad in this world, which I don't think is according to the scriptures. So if, if, the, uh, if there were millions of years before the flood, or before the, uh, God made everything, or before Genesis account, then this is no longer true. And the Bible also tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Well, if there were millions of years, then this would not be true either. In fact, as you carry on, Jesus' death would have been irrelevant. In other words, Jesus would have died for nothing. In fact, Christianity then would be nothing. But it's because mankind sinned and rebelled against God. That's why God himself took it upon his own self to pay the penalty for the sins that we have brought on the earth. Right? We are the ones. That's why the shedding of the blood of Christ forgives sins for everyone who will receive Christ. And if you haven't done that, you need to do that. And so the Bible tells us, the story of the Bible tells us that the death was after everything had been made good. And so it's not millions of years old. At most, it can be something like 6,000 years old. Well, then, okay, we still have an issue. So it works like this. First, it was good. Then we have Adam's sin. And then death and, and, and uh, evil things enter the world. And the fossil record, what we see in the fossils, is a record of what happened after Adam sinned. And so we see, we look at that, and one of the things that we find in these fossil records are dinosaurs. And to help you, we have Creation Ministries International. We have, uh, we're in seven countries. I'm a part-time speaker. I actually work full-time for CAE. And, um, so, but I get to speak across the country. And um, so we have money scientists on staff who write the books and the, and the DVDs, et cetera, that you get to buy. And I mentioned if you buy more than $50 worth, you get a free, this DVD free. And um, we then, um, as I say, go across the country. Recently, I was in Alberta. Now I'm going to PEI in a month. I'm going to North Bay Sudbury, back and forth, crisscrossing the country. And um, we also have a newsletter that comes out. And I'm going to ask the ushers uh, or usherettes if they would hand around those clipboards. And uh, this is sign up for our Info Bites, which is a periodic uh, newsletter that comes out. Anything that happens on the news is posted daily on the site, but this is a collection of the key ones. Okay. All right, so just put your name, email address in, in well, in English or whatever, right? Just not in Arabic. <laughs> Sometimes the writing looks like Arabic writing. Okay. okay, so when I grew up as a kid, I remembered, anybody remember the Flintstones? Yabba-dabba-doo, right? You remember Dino the dinosaur? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Dino is my favorite dinosaur family. I mean, family. And, of course, we have all kinds of movies about dinosaur, land before time, Bigfoot, Littlefoot on all the foot, the dinosaur train, etc. all that stuff. I have four sons. They're all growing up now. I have two grandsons. Do they like dinosaurs? Did they like them? Absolutely. They love dinosaurs because they were tremendously uh, big creatures. They were awesome creatures. But what about dinosaurs? Did they die out 65 million years ago, as you have in schools and universities, every place, say 65 million years ago? Or were they destroyed in the flood of Noah? That's a good question. Were they destroyed in the flood of Noah? Hmm. Well, those are the two options, and we're going to look at some of these things to see which fits best. Either it was 65 million years ago or only about 4,500 years ago. That is quite a bit different. Uh, in the scenario. What do we know about dinosaurs? Well, we know about dinosaurs from the fossils. Fossils are rocks, things that have turned into rock. There are many different ways things can be fossilized. Permineralization or replacing the minerals in the bones with uh, other minerals and to become rock, that is, a, that is a, uh, one form of fossilization. Where do we find these fossils? Well, we literally find them all over the world, including Arctic and the Antarctic. What were dinosaurs doing up in the Arctic? I can see the red dot there, and also in Antarctica. But didn't dinosaurs need a lot of food to eat and to survive? Didn't it have to be kept fairly warm? Absolutely. So what we're looking at is that the temperature, the climate that was then, okay, is right a bit different than what it is now, okay. And um, so you go over to Alberta and a place like that, you have Dinosaur Provincial Park. My wife and I have been there. We travel across the country. I was there uh, not too long ago, and you can actually see dinosaurs in the rock. You can't take them, but you can see them. And um, even in places like Drumheller in um, in Alberta. Now this is supposed to be a video that's supposed to go, but uh, I can't do it with this tablet. Anyway, so you go to the Royal Tyrell Museum. Anybody's been there? Okay, this is not so much a dinosaur museum as an evolutionary indoctrination museum. Okay? They want to walk you through the alleged times periods, okay? And, um, but this is all compressed sandstone. What kind of rocks do you call these that you see there? They're not metamorphic, they're not igneous, they're sedimentary. And sedimentary means? Settled there out of water. Right? Sedimentary is, means out of water, sedimented out of water. We see this all around the world. We see this layering effect all around the world, all made by water. Can anybody think of a scenario in the past, at least the Bible records, in which there was a lot of water all over the world? Exactly, the flood of Noah. Okay. Dinosaurs. A number of years ago, uh, they were telling us that dinosaurs were actually reptiles that got very, very old. They no longer say that. That dinosaurs are a different class of animals. And they are only the land animals. So you have flying reptiles, such as pterodons and uh, uh, quetzalcoatlus and things like that. Those are not dinosaurs, although the people tend to think of them as flying dinosaurs. They are actually flying reptiles. And of course you have reptiles that live in the ocean. They're called marine reptiles. And of course you just have the old regular reptiles, like alligators and crocodiles, etc. What about the orders of crocodiles? Or sorry, uh, Dinosaurs. There are two major orders of dinosaurs. There are the Sauricea, or lizard hip. Lizards have legs that come out to the side and then down, like a crocodile. Legs that go out to the side and then down. But bird hip is the Ornithidia, and blah, 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 blah. It's the bird hip where the legs come straight down. Now, we're, uh, we'll, we'll come to that. I just want to note that are there dinosaurs living today? No, not, there, not, not crocodile. Why do you say that? <laughs> but they say that, this is correct what she's saying, 
but it's based on the assumption that dinosaurs evolved into birds. So they classify non-avian dinosaurs, in other words, non-bird dinosaurs, and avian dinosaurs. This is actually what's taught in universities, that the birds we have today have evolved from dinosaurs. Okay? So I'm telling you, this is what's being taught. I'm not making this up. Okay. Guess which of the two orders of either Sauricea or Anithia do you think that the avian dinosaurs or the birds were allegedly to evolve from? You think it was the lizard hip or the bird hip? You'd be wrong. It would be the lizard hip. <laughs> uh, that's, I'm sorry. That's the way. Anyway, how many suborders? Well, some of you may have. There are five suborders. The theropoda or the theropods, such as Tyrannosaurus rex. And you have the uh, sauropodomorpha, which are the sauropod, which are the long necks, such as Apatosaurus or Brontosaurus. You also have the ornithopoda, which such as Hadrosaurus. Marginocephalia, or the crested dinosaurs, like the Triceratops. And lastly, you have the Thyrophora. Thyreophora, which are the armored dinosaurs, such as ankylosaurs. So you have two major orders and five suborders of dinosaurs. And um, they got to be very big. I mean, like, really, really big. Here's a Quetzalcoatlus. As you can see, that is not some ordinary bird. Now it's dead. It is dead. In fact, it's just a model of one. But they, the fossils tell us that they grew to be that big. And, but you notice it's got a red crest on the uh, red crest on its head. Right? Well, what do we know? Do we know what color the dinosaurs were? No, we do not, because although we, there are some uh, uh, tantalizing clues about pigment and skin, but uh, generally we do not know because all we have is bones, and they look kind of brownish or grayish. Right? Do we know that a triceratops looked like this? No, because this is an artistic rendition. But you actually, this is what they, that's all we got. Okay, boom. And here we have Triceratops, right? Sorry, Tyrannosaurus Rex, okay? Uh, just checking, see if you're paying attention. But, uh, <clears throat> right, one of the things you'll notice, what they've noticed in the dinosaur bones is that they will find holes in them where other dinosaurs have bitten them. You also find tumors, like in the spine, not in this particular one, but they have a, tricerat a tri Triceratops, Sorry, tri Tyrannosaurus rex, which actually has a tumor on its spine, right? So these animals were subject to carnivory, being eaten by other animals, and also by cancers and other diseases. In some cases, something caused all these dinosaurs, obviously to die, but also to be piled up in heaps called dinosaur boneyards. You'll find that in places like Montana and Alberta, places like that. Um, and in fact, my wife and I are planning to drive out to Utah and Colorado this year and to go to uh, Dinosaur National Monument in which they have Quarry Hill, Exhibit Hill, which is actually a cut. In, it's not put there. It's actually natural. And you see all these dinosaurs all piled up together. In some cases, there are millions of bone fragments from tens of thousands of dinosaurs. And in some cases, they're in a desert-like environment, a lot of sand. So how are you going to get all these dinosaurs mixed up all together, jumbled all up, and then obviously killed, and their bones all in pieces, unless there was some kind of major catastrophe? Right? Speaking well to a global flood would be a major catastrophe. Okay. Here you also see some, uh, again, I can't really do that on, can you touch that screen? Can you see that screen there? Can you touch uh, the touch screen on the top? Just touch it. Uh, right in the middle. Ah, uh, okay. Not, uh, that's, that, that, that obviously that works. Anyway, we'll skip that one. So what about dinosaurs? Bones, how, how big did they start off with? Well, this is about the biggest dinosaur egg ever found. Okay. That's a pretty big egg, right? Uh, that was in Creation Magazine. I'm going to mention that. All kinds of wonderful stuff you'll get in Creation Magazine. How many people get Creation Magazine? Okay, well, all the rest of you can sign up. Okay, so dinosaur eggs, and yet, here's another example of dinosaurs. You can see that a, uh, the eggs are along with the mother. 
Now, whether they were in or outside the mother, we're not really sure, but you can see this is rapid deposition of sediments, as they say. This is from nature, right? A nesting dinosaur, it was covered over with water and sediments and then fossilized while it was sitting on the nest. That's how fast it had to occur. There are no sign of... De now, that's just an artist's rendition, depiction of a dinosaur embryo, but that's how the baby dinosaurs were inside the egg. And so, obviously, it tells us that dinosaurs were nesting uh, animals. Here's how I like this picture, because I'm just thinking, if I was... What do you think the big dinosaur is thinking? <laughs> uh, getting hungry yet? But you can see the difference in size from the small ones to the huge ones. In fact, here's what the sauropods got, how big they got. That's hard to tell exactly how big, but here is a leg bone. As you can see, that is a huge creature. Okay. And how about, um, and, and here's a, I've been in aviation for 42 years, but uh, this gives you an idea of an Airbus 380. And uh, which is the largest passenger plane in the world, and some of them got to be almost as long. They were monsters. And that's, of course, one of the fascination. Now, a lot of the dinosaurs were uh, of different sizes. You had small ones and big ones, and they're saying the smallest dinosaur was bigger than two-thirds of all current mammals. In other words, the average size of dinosaurs were bigger than what we see today. The majority of dinosaurs were bigger than all but 2% of living creatures. So they got to be big. But not only the dinosaurs, but all the other animals that lived before the flood. In fact, you have dragonflies, which have about huge wingspans. They look like uh, flying uh, huge birds. And they have in, uh, if you go to uh, Algonquin Park, I think it's outside of it, they'll show you a picture of a, a skull of a beaver. The beaver must have been this high. Okay. Awesome creatures. But then all the animals did live, uh, you know, that got to be that big. It's obviously a different environment. We don't have that now. And the environment we have is not suited for all those creatures. We don't have mammoth size. Well, we don't have mammoth. Plus, we don't have the huge uh, uh, beavers or dinosaurs. The climate changed tremendously because of that. Now, dinosaurs, they used to think they gradually, when, from that egg size, and just gradually just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But as the scientists have done more research, they realized that dinosaurs, again, the land animals, actually went, they suspect they went through a growth spurt. In other words, that they initially went from a very, uh, when they were hatched, they would grow very slowly until they got about five years old, in which case they then started to increase in mass at a horrendous rate. In fact, in some cases, as much as an African elephant per year. That's how much mass they grew, gained. Some of them were up to like 25,000 kilograms, which is over 55,000 pounds, which is somewhere in the order of you know, 25 tons. These are massive creatures. So they would have had to eat an enormous amount of food. So the environment could not have been a desert. It would have been lush vegetation so they could consume all that stuff right, and to grow. Now, earlier we talked about um, dinosaurs evolving from birds. Sorry, or birds evolving from dinosaurs the other way around. And here's a picture of the alleged event. Okay. This is that they have in a textbook that somehow there was this little uh, small dinosaur, had to catch that dragonfly, and over time it slowly, its front legs became wings, and those wings became bigger, and eventually it turned into a blue jay. Okay. Okay. This is actually what's being taught. Okay? It's interesting to note the dinosaurs evolved into birds, but the dragonflies stay the same. Okay? Interesting. So they were, have always been, um, so the question then is, what evidence is there? What evidence, real evidence, I, I mean, we can make up stories all day long, but what actual physical evidence can we point to to show dinosaurs becoming birds? Pardon? Pardon? I uh, uh, don't get too far along that. Okay. In 1861, they found this Archaeopteryx. Anybody heard of Archaeopteryx? Okay, sometimes people have it on their uh, archaeopteryx. So archaeopteryx, archaic bird. And so they said, ah, 
you can see on the uh, end of the points of the wing here, uh, they have hooks on, it, on their wings. And it kind of looks like a, uh, a bird. It's got feathers. It looks kind of like a dinosaur. So in the imagination, this is a transitional form, they said, between dinosaurs, between, uh, uh, dinosaurs and birds. So it's long been touted as that. Here's that proof they're looking for. However, even evolutionists themselves dispute this claim. And so here, for example, is a Dr. Fiducia, who is an ardent evolutionist. He says, paleontologists have tried to turn Archaeopteryx into an earthbound feathered dinosaur, but it's not. It's a bird, a perching bird, and no amount of paleobabble is going to change that. I like the word paleobabble, old time talk, right? But so the scientists themselves say, it's just a bird. I mean, it's interesting that it would be a transverse form, but there's no evidence from Archaeopteryx. Now, in 1993, Time magazine, arguably at that time, the most uh, uh, respected journal or magazine in the world, it came out with this headline, The Truth About Dinosaurs. It's, the bylines are saying, surprise, just about everything you believe is wrong. And I'm thinking to myself, the only reason we believe it is because you told us. And now what you're telling us is that what you told us before is wrong. Now here is the new truth. Interesting. They say here on this thing, meet Mononychus, a new link between dinosaurs and birds. Ah, Archaeopteryx, thanks, we don't need you anymore. We have Mononychus. Well, there it is, it's proof. Look at Time magazine, a very respected magazine said this. So all the people in the world saying, well, if Time magazine says it must be a transitional form, I guess it must be a transitional form. This was in 1993. 26 years ago. So I looked up and said, what did they say about Mononychus now? Well, it was a few years ago, looked it up, and this is in August 2014. Interesting, it says, what does it say? It says, it was a small dinosaur, not a transitional form. And interestingly enough, it says, consists of a partial skeleton lacking a tail and only small fragments of skull bones, including a complete brain case. But on the picture, what did you see? A nice long tail, which in fact, they never found. So then how can it be a bird if it don't have no tail? Right? So this is deceptive, isn't it? And yet, without people looking closer, we just simply say, well, if Time Magazine says it must be true, it must be true. There's a lot of this going on. A lot of, take my word for it, uh, don't look too closely. Because if you look too closely, you're going to find something else. And this is where Creation Ministry International go on, let's take a closer look at this stuff. Because it isn't necessarily what, you, what the actual science says. It's what people say about the science, but it's not what the science says. Okay. Another example is Dr. Carl Werner, a, a medical doctor, went to, him and his wife went to about 65 natural history museums around the world. They wanted to find the links, the transitional forms between uh, dinosaurs and birds and also the original type of dinosaurs, right? So all the different variety of dinosaurs must have come from some common ancestor. So he put this in these books and he talked to the curators of these, of these uh, museums. He did an awful lot of research. So this is a picture that comes from the Chicago Field Museum. I've been there and I don't recall this though, but Chicago Field Museum and his wife took the picture. So this is what they have for all the kids and all the people. You see all those lines connecting everything? They're saying it all came from a common ancestor. And we have all of these fossils. As you can see, the number of fossils we have of each type. 200,000 birds and 287 sauropods, etc., etc. Now, there are more than that now. But they say it all came down to a common ancestor at one point. So Dr. Werner asked them, okay, so show me the fossil evidence of all these common ancestors. And they were happily to show him none. There were none common ancestors. And yet, the, the public is told 
that all the dinosaurs evolved over time from some common ancestors, but yet the actual scientific evidence says not. So there's a lot of storytelling going on here, which is storytelling in schools and in textbooks. But of course, unless you know where to, else to look, you just take it because people who are smart say this. But there are a lot of smart people saying this isn't true either. All right, let's take a look at what something the Bible says. The hist you know, the Bible, you talk, people said, you know, you can't go to the Bible because it's not a science book. That is irrelevant. That's not, even, uh, that's not even part of the discussion. The question is not about the science, but about history. What actually happened in the past? These are the questions we're asking. What, were we created or were, did we evolve from something else? The question isn't a science question, it's a history question. And in order to do that, we got to go to sources of history. So we have several sources. One is the Bible is a source of history. It's God's history book. He took, inspired men to write what actually happened. And so that's what we look at. The Bible is a history book. And of course, there's a lot of details in it. And some of the details tells us that it took six days. And um, so... Day five and six is where living creatures were created. So let me answer the question then, where, on what day were the marine reptiles created? Well, it would have been along with all the other marine animals, animals that live in the sea on day five. And what about dinosaurs? Well, they were land animals. When were the land animals created? On day six. Okay. How do we know? Who was there? I'm serious. Who, who was there? Adam and Eve were not there yet. I mean, they were the last of all of this. Who was there? Sorry? God was there. Right? In fact, God saw the whole thing. And what did he say? But that's the question. That's the issue. What does, did God say? And we have it in our Bible. That's what God said. Can you trust God to take him at his word? I mean, that's a big question, too. If you can't trust God, then don't take him at his word. But we do trust God at his word. He was there. He had the power to do what he said. And uh, he told us what he did. So we can just take him at his word. In fact, that's what faith really is, isn't it? Faith is taking God at his word. All right. So at the very beginning, we mentioned before, God had made everything perfect. Dinosaurs weren't eating people. People weren't eating dinosaurs. Nobody was eating anybody. Okay. So what were people eating then? They would have eaten plants. All right. Well, the Bible tells us, I give every green plant for food. Everybody was vegetarian. Everybody was vegetarian. Okay. <laughs> so uh, what's for dinner? <laughs> but the world has changed. Okay, but what about T-Rex here? I mean, look at those big, big teeth. Were they meant for eating cabbages and carrots? Well, that's a good question. Do long, pointy teeth mean that they only eat meat? Well, we'll find out. Look at this creature. Doesn't it have long, pointy teeth? Yes, it has long, pointy teeth. Yes, yeah. <laughs> what do you think that was? No. Huh? Huh? Nope. Nope. Not a dinosaur. In fact, it's a black bear. I'm, I think the black bear looks a little sheepish. <laughs> says, I'm supposed to be ferocious, and I'm eating these little berries. <laughs> okay. Right. What about this fearsome creature? Look at the long. T ah, that's right. What do you think that is? Any Maybe a tiger, but it's not. It's a, and I won't tell you what it eats. It's a fruit bat. Amazing. What about this ferocious creature? That's got very long, pointy teeth, don't you think? Boy, that thing eats uh, meat, I tell you. It's going to, all right, what do you think that is? Wolverine. Wolverine? Nope. A pig. Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a chihuahua. That's right, folks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See that? That's a chihuahua. A dead one, mind you, but that's a chihuahua. 
Okay, all of these things. Okay. Can eat. And this one? Any ideas? It's a, a bulldog. <laughs> bulldog. Yeah, that's a ferocious monster, that one. Okay. And finally, what are the most feared creatures to be encountered in the wild? I haven't got there yet. <laughs> this one. That looks pretty ferocious. Look at the fangs on that thing, right? What do you think that is? Egg, mate, monkey, no. Saber to tiger, uh, that's a good guess. No, no, I've said it's most ferocious. The most feared creature. Ja jaguar, leopard, panther, ooh, no, nah, yeah. Sorry, folks, it's a Chinese water deer. Okay, then. Uh, they goes around at night eating lions and tigers and things like that. I don't think, isn't that strange? We look at the teeth and we think, this thing must be eating meat of all kinds. But it's a deer. What do you think deers eat? Right? Having to have these long things, right? So it's kind of interesting. Just because they have long pointed tank, teeth doesn't necessarily mean it eat meat. And the fact that it doesn't have long pointy teeth doesn't mean that it doesn't eat meat. Right? What about the, the okay? Here's another example of a lion that refused to eat meat. It was a creation magazine a number of years ago. The lion that absolutely refused to eat meat. It ate all kinds of vegetables and stuff like that. And uh, you see the picture, the lion and the lamb. Boy, that's a biblical theme right there, right? And the chicks and the lion in the car. Okay. And they were, the bottom picture on the lower left, the butcher's trying to feed the lion with some raw meat. It refused. And in the article, it says that the uh, uh, veterinarians said that this one of the, one of the most healthy lions they saw right? is dead now, but it was a number of years ago. Right? So whether it eat meats or not, not, they even have a, in Creation Magazine a shark that would only eat vegetables. A shark. <laughs> and of course, because it doesn't have very pointy teeth, it can't eat meat either, right? Right, right. So you can't really tell a whole lot from the teeth by itself. Well, we know that the Bible tells us that God had made everything good, and then Adam and Eve spoiled it, made everything rotten. And Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, so they couldn't get back in and eat from the tree of life and live forever in that state. God has now banished us to die. We have to die. That's part of God's redemptive plan. Okay? But in the world before Adam and Eve sinned, the dinosaurs would have lived in harmony and peace. They wouldn't have been eating each other, and they wouldn't have been eating us, humans. But when Adam sinned, it changed everything. And then dinosaurs were eating each other, and the big ones were eating the little ones, and everybody's, and people were killing people. Cain killed Abel. Right? Didn't take too long before things went uh, bad. Here's a fossils of a raptor and a ceratopsian, a crested dinosaur. You look over here. You see over here? It's a claw of the raptor on the crest of the dinosaur. So it was obviously these things were wrestling and fighting together when they were both inundated in a flood and both buried together in that position and they must have turned into fossils within a very very short period of time a number of days because there's no evidence that these things rotted and the bones all fell apart so we're talking in a very short period of time a matter of days and maybe a week at most fossilization by nature is a very very fast process in fact in some cases almost instantaneous not maybe not here but it would have been a number of days what about the demise of the dinosaurs? What happened to them? We're told that dinosaurs were killed off by some great uh, catastrophe, which we agree. We just don't agree with the 65 million years ago. And so the scenario is that there was some kind of an asteroid that created a shock on the Earth, put up a lot of debris into the atmosphere, blocked off the sunlight, temperature got cold, they couldn't survive. But when we look at the actual fossil evidence, we see that these things were buried 
The animals were buried. They just didn't die from lack of oxygen, etc. They were, they were buried. Okay. Interesting to note that while the dinosaurs died off, the regular reptiles did not. Why did they continue? Hmm. Interesting. But of course, we know the real reasons dinosaurs died off. <laughs> Kids, pay attention. Okay. Of course, that's not true, right? Uh, smoking's really good for you, right? No. 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 <laughs> yeah, my dad died of cancer. So, so here's, a dinosaur, here's Noah's Ark, right? Nothing like Noah's Ark. This, in fact, Creation Ministries International Answers in Genesis will not even publish books with depictions of Ark like this. Because it's not even realistic. When you think about the Ark and how big this thing was, right? You think, okay, this is ludicrous. How do you get all these big monster animals into the, into the ark? Here's a, a Dutch fellow, actually made an ark full size, he put it on barges, was trying to bring it over from Holland over to the Brazil Olympics, never got happened. But Answers in Genesis, Ken Ham put a lot of money to build an ark in Kentucky. Anybody been there? I tell you, if you ever have an opportunity, it is well worth. I'm not sure if this will work. There's a video. Can you touch that video on? Just touch the screen. Not the, no, no keyboard. Just touch the screen. The video is supposed to play. I'm not sure why it's not. Okay. Anyway, it's a huge arc. Okay. It's huge inside. Okay, I'll just carry on. Huge inside. Uh, my wife and I have been to the dare. It's, it's a monstrous sized thing. It's, okay. Here's cages inside. They're trying to replicate what it actually could have uh, entailed what, what could have gone on side. Obviously, all the food, etc. There's an excellent book uh, by Dr. by John Woodenrumthorpe, who did an analysis of everything required for the animals to survive the ark. And uh, excellent, lots of detail if you want to know about that. Well, let's ask the question: How many animals needed to go on the ark? Oftentimes, this is a question. Well, we got millions and millions of species of animals. There's no way you can get them on the ark. Well, let's see how to get on. How many, what was the capacity of the ark? Okay, that's a good question. Well, it could handle the volume of about 520 railroad cars. And if you have uh, 240 sheep in each, in each car, I mean, you won't have happy sheep. They'll be piled up. But right? you could carry 120, almost 125,000 sheep. That's a lot of sheep. Okay. But how many animals actually needed to go into the ark? Millions? Billions? Whatever. How many? What do you say? You're on the right track there. Very good. And, and I'll get, it will come to that. Actually, only about 16,000 animals needed to get on the ark. Again, that's from that same book. It's a very, but an interesting book, calculation of all that. What do you mean? There's more than 16,000 species of animals, right? Absolutely there are. So, well, let's come, let's ask a question about how many dinosaurs went into the ark. And this will help to explain some of these things. How many dinosaurs? Well, there were many, many different varieties of dinosaurs, but there weren't all that many kinds of dinosaurs. Okay, there's a clue. God had made animals to reproduce according to their kind. Not according to the species, but according to his kind. Now, kind is a type of animal. So, for example, both evolutionists and creationists, and you're going to read in books, etc., do agree that all the varieties of, in this case, dogs, were descended from a common ancestor. So therefore, you only needed the common ancestor kind, a male and female, because in their genetics would have the variations for all the different varieties of dogs in the world today. In fact, breeders of animals exploit this, and they get different varieties of animals, mixing and matching, etc. So you don't have to have you know, 40 different varieties of dogs, you just need an original type, an archetype, okay? So that means I got rid of a lot of dogs. Right? But also with dinosaurs, 
Now you say, oh, if I go to a museum, there's thousands of different varieties of dinosaurs. But actually, it was a, it was a non-Christian uh, uh, evolutionary scientist who said, he called it what they call shape-shifting dinosaurs. Shape-shifting dinosaurs. Now, anybody who finds a dinosaur, and we have more than enough dinosaur bones, everybody who finds one wants to attach their name to it. You know, Dawsonian or whatever the name to it, they give the name that they discovered a dinosaur. But what the... Dr. Jack Horner says, he had a, a TED talk on this, saying that what he thinks is that dinosaurs actually sh change shape over time. In other words, on the left, they would have been one shape, but as they got older, they would actually have changed shape and look like, now if you only dug them out of the ground, you found them, oh, totally different animals. But Dr. Horner saying, no, no, they were the same to kind of animals, but at different ages. You see? In fact, when you have the Ceratopsians, the crested dinosaurs, all of these are just dinosaurs at different stages in life. Some of them have more horns, a shape. I mean, do people change shape over time? <laughs> all right, okay then, enough said. Okay. So actually, only about 60 dinosaur kinds were required. Somewhere between 55 and 70 dinosaurs kinds required. And you only need two of each. So that's 140 dinosaurs, 100 something like that. Uh, if you do four, 20, you're right, 60. But if you do 70, 140, you're right. Okay. So how would I get them in? Well, not like this. This is not going to work. First of all, who brought the dinosaurs over to the ark? It was God. That's right. This is a good, this is a good crowd. Yeah. Sure. I'm going to have to do better next time. Okay, so now, of course, Tyrannosaurus rex was huge. Diplodocus was huger. Okay, even more huge. But when you think about it, we mentioned earlier that animals went fairly small at the beginning, and then when about five years, they hit their growth spurt. So why would you bring in a monster-sized dinosaur when you can bring in their young ones? The young ones, before five years old, are going to be relatively small, only about a ton. Right? So here we have like an apatosaurus. Why don't we get a small one? That's right, a small one. Oh, sorry. I was going to, it, it worked different. You know, with Photoshop, you can make them any size you want, or with PowerPoint, right? So here you see... Uh, the, unfortunately, animations don't work here, okay? So anyway, you bring the young ones in, and they're a lot easier. There you are. They're a small dinosaur. So here's a picture. I don't know where this is actually came from, but I found this. And this is very interesting. It's allegedly Noah and some of his family. They're watching all the animals. There's several things wrong with this picture. One, or the, the door in the ark was on the side. It was not on the roof, roof entry. Secondly, how many varieties of cats do I have? Several cats. I didn't need those, all of those. I only need two archetypal. Okay. In fact, now you have ligers and tigons, or tions, or something like that. You can crossbreed lions and tigers. Okay. And what's also missing is the dinosaurs. Okay. They could easily have gone on the ark if they're that size. I mean, and they would have been under a different condition. Got to remember, it was God who brought these animals. So they weren't eating and killing each other as they all were marching into the ark, right? So obviously they were under control of God. This is a supernatural event. It's not a natural. These all these wild animals just somehow decided of their own to come into the ark. Some of you may have seen pictures like this of the sauropod dinosaurs, where the neck is craned back. If you go to Drumheller Royal Tower Museum, you see these type of things. It's common. But you'll notice the neck arched almost 180 degrees back. Right? Now, if you look at your textbook, they'll say, how, does, how do dinosaurs' uh, fossils are made? Well, a dinosaur's walking along. It has a heart attack and plunk, falls down. And then it gets buried. And over millions of years, it turns to fossil. Well, we don't think so because this is clear evidence that that did not happen. Because if an animal just dies and lays there, its neck would not be arched. So scientists are telling us that this is evidence of a lack of oxygen to the brain. And when these creatures have lack, lack, lack of oxygen to the brain, their necks automatically crane back into this position. Then they die 
and then they uh, turn rigor mortis, and they stay there, and they become a fossil. So this is evidence of these things being buried alive. They were alive when they were drowned, and then they, lack of oxygen, obviously, then they started to crane their neck, and then they stayed there. And this is typical of the sauropodian dinosaurs, indicating that they were just running along or motoring along, and they got covered up with the flood, and they died, and then they went through this particular pose. There's also evidence of rapid burial. So, for example, here we have a picture of an ichthyosaur, and some of you may have seen this before, but this is a, a mother in a, giving birth. Now, you heard about long labors, right? But this one wasn't. Right? Because this, dinos this ichthyosaur, marine reptile, must have been turned into a fossil within a very, very short period of time. Because, obviously, the baby's still halfway out of the mother. And there's no evidence, such as on the lower one, you see those fish, there's no evidence of decay or rotting or being scavenged or falling apart. Now, you can try an experiment on this of your own. You can go to the, uh, you know, the Loblaws or the Muralatos and ask for a fish and put it on the counter. See how long before this thing will decay and turn into stinking mess. It won't be very long, right? So this is evidence that this fossilization must have happened in very, very short order. Very, very short time. A matter of less than a day or two. And dinosaurs. Now, we're told that dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago. And yet, the scientific evidence suggests not, that's not correct. In 2005, a Dr. Mary Schweitzer was digging through some unfossilized Tyrannosaurus rex bones. These had not been turned into rock. And so as she was digging, she found these materials. These are organic materials. And she said it was flexible, resilient, when, re when stretch returns to its original shape. Isn't that interesting? And she goes on to say, actually, when she published it about 2005, she said, I did this experiment 17 times. I always came back with the same thing. It, it looks like modern tissue. It's virtually, she said, indistinguishable from what we see today. So when she first published it in the, in the scientific community, they all said, Dr. Schweitzer, <laughs> I'm sorry, this, we can't accept this because we know that dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago and we know that organic material cannot stay like this without rotting for that period of time. I mean, it's just beyond all belief. Everything we know about science says that that is impossible. She says, you must have some kind of contamination in your laboratory, biofilms, whatever. Sorry, we, we reject it. So she spent 10 years doing the same thing. And it was even on ABC News. I think it was, uh, who was that lady that, uh, anyway. So it was on ABC, did a segment on her. She said 10 years, she did every kind of protocol to validate her experiment. In fact, she tried many times to falsify her own experiments, which is something you should do if you're a good, true scientist doing that. You should try to falsify. And if it keeps coming back the same way, it's pretty sure that's the way it is. Well, she came back time and time again. She says, whatever I do, it still comes back organic material from Tyrannosaurus rex bones. So then later on, she published it. And they could only, because she did such rigorous, uh, you know, the scientific method, they finally said, OK, Dr. Schweitzer, we do accept that this is Tyrannosaurus rex organic material. And guess what? It can last 65 million years. <laughs> but wait a minute. Ten years earlier, it wasn't even possible. Now it's possible? What happened in the ten years? Because they knew that she did proper scientific work, but they didn't like her conclusions. Because this says that dinosaurs did not die out millions of years ago, but they died out just thousands of years ago well within the biblical time frame. Hmm. This is, people claim that you, you creationists, you twist the science to suit your fact, to suit what you want it to. This is a good case of evolutionists twisting the science to fit what they want the outcome to be. This is deception of the highest order. And there have been many more uh, organic materials found. They're up to almost a half a billion years now. By what 
scientific process is that even conceivable? But they have to maintain the story of evolution. And so no ma they'll keep feeding lies and misdeceptions just to maintain the story. Right? Unfortunately, that's what we have in our academic, because for many people, God cannot be involved. You know, we live in a secular province. God cannot be involved. We, you know, we say secular, but really it means atheistic. God cannot be involved. Nothing. Every, we've got to remove every, from, uh, you know, God in our society. So, why don't we see dinosaurs in the Bible? It's a good question. Okay. Well, actually, the term dinosaurs were only coined in 1841 by uh, the head of the British, Sir Richard Owens. He called them fearfully great reptiles. What did they call them before 1841? They were fossils. What did they call them? Dragon. They called them dragons. There be dragons. Right? And of course we know we've heard the dragon before. I mean, you can't call it dinosaurs before somebody invents the word dinosaur, but they called them dragons. And there were searches for dragons. That makes sense. Is there any evidence for other evidence for dinosaurs that were seen in the Bible? Well, talk about Job refers to behemoth. It's interesting because it talks about an animal, and one of the things it has, its tail sways like a cedar. There it is. Now some of you might have cedar hedges. This is not the cedar we're talking about. We're talking about the Middle East. This is a cedar of Lebanon. Okay. It's rather a big tree. So when it says it swayed its tail like a cedar, he wasn't talking a little, little twig here. He's talking about some pretty significant. Right? So many Bible commentators will have at the bottom of the Bible will say, well, it could have been a, a, uh, a hippopotamus or an elephant. Uh, it doesn't exactly seem like that's what they were describing. I mean, look at the elephant, just a little swoosh, and that hippo. I'd be embarrassed to have a tail like that. I mean, that's not a, that's a small, tiny tail. So I got this tail, huge tail. Would it fit on an elephant? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. How about a hippo? Would that fit? No, it wouldn't make any sense. How about a sauropod dinosaur? Yeah, that would make sense. So we cannot prove, we don't need pictures, but the, what Job, the oldest book in the Bible, could have seen was a sauropod dinosaur. Is there any evidence that dinosaurs were seen since the flood by humans? That's a good question. Right? Well, so this is a carving in China, 2000 BC. Hmm, what does it look like? Well, it looks like some kind of a crested dinosaur, maybe a monoceratops or a centrosaurus. Okay. There's a book, uh, Dragons. I'm not sure we have it. Do we have that, Deb? Here, right here, uh, where the Dr. Uh, uh, John uh, Vance Nelson does a whole amazing job on these type of things. Okay, so obviously somebody must have seen something in order to make a carving from it. In Cambodia, or here's an ancient cylinder seal. This is so you roll this on clay, and then it makes impression. Well, that certainly looks like. Not a modern animal, but something like a dinosaur type of creature. And in Angkor Wat, Cambodia, this is the oldest, one of the oldest, uh, largest religious monument. In fact, a co-worker went there two years ago. Now, he's an atheist. And um, so Angkor Wat's a Buddhist, and it's a little overgrown. I think the gardener gave up about three, four centuries ago. Right? And uh, so on the temple, there's carvings. And one of the carvings looks like this. What does that look like? So my atheist co-worker went there. I, he took a picture. Not this one, but he took a picture. He says, oh, it's not a stegosaurus. No, 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 it can't be a stegosaurus. No, no. So another co-worker, a guy named Guy, came along, and I said, Guy, what does this look like? He says, stegosaurus. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, of course it looks like a stegosaurus. But it all depends on what you want to see, right? If you don't want to see a stegosaurus, oh, it's just a stylized hippo with some plates on its back. Right? Well, really, you know, it can do that, but uh, it does look like a stegosaurus. In England, in, uh, uh, um, in a, well, it's here, okay, Carlisle Cathedral, they actually buried the dead in the floor. And in one of them, a Bishop Bell, Bishop Bell, 
on the floor, they have engraving of creatures which uh, look like this. So it's possible in England they even had creatures that were looking like dinosaurs. Okay. And um, they have a carpet on there because you see braskets wore up by feet and worn off. And in Mali in the 1800s, the carvings of creatures like this looked like a dinosaur. Okay. And dragons. Talked about dragons before. Here's an example of a, a writing in 1900s, an Irish writer recording a scenario that looked like a, a dragon. And in fact, you also have dragons, legends, all over the world. Of course, China has the year of the dragon, and it has a dragon on their uh, flag. Here we have St. George slays the dragon. That could have been a dinosaur. Right? Probably not the fire-breathing variety, but uh, it's a legend. Uh, we have it there. Okay. And the, the flag of Wales has a dragon on it. Marco Polo okay, was an Italian explorer who actually went all the way to China by land, and he has he chronicled his journey in his, in his books, volumes, and this is what he says. Travels of, look at in yellow. Here are seen huge serpents. Jaws are wide enough to swallow a man. The teeth are sharp and large. And their whole appearance is so formidable that neither man nor any kind of animal can approach them without terror. It says, whatever beast they can meet with and can lay hold of, whether tiger, wolf, or any other, they devour. So we're talking about a creature that eats tigers. Wow, I mean, you're not talking a rhinoceros or a uh, hippo or an elephant. We're talking about some huge, fearsome creature. And so this is what Marco Polo is writing about. This was in, the, I think, the 1500s he wrote about that. So how to prevent your children from uh, leaving the faith right, is to introduce them to these type of things. I'm glad your church is having that. Many churches will not have Croatian Ministry National. Because they accept evolution. But of course, if you accept evolution, then the Bible cannot be true. And of course, you have some, of the, uh, some denominations who are just literally disintegrating because they have compromised with the Bible. They no longer accept the Bible as the word of God. It just has some words from God. But evolution's true. Everything the scientists say is true, etc., etc. But eventually then becomes the Bible's not true. The gospel's not true. Christianity's not true. Then what are we doing here? So it's a downhill slope. And this is an example of this woman who, unfortunately, her church let her down. They should have been saying, okay, this is an issue. You know, dinosaurs, our kids like them. What can I do with them? I can't just avoid it. By avoiding it, they actually made the problem. If they tackle it right on. And same for you and your kids or grandkids. You need to get them the resources they need in order to, uh, you know, answer those questions. And there's lots of answers. You know, Creation Ministries International has been putting out on our website, creation.com, articles for over 30 years. There's over 11,000 articles. There's something, 700 videos. There's all kinds of books. When I started looking at this 40 years ago, there was just a few books. Actually, I was a member of the Creation Science Association of Quebec. And in the 1990s, we did a debate at McGill University. Anybody remember that? Like in 92. 1,200 people showed up. The creation of evolution. Fantastic debate. Okay. I still remember that. So what can you do to get equipped? Well, you can get some of these resources. DVDs, books, and if you buy over 50, you get a free DVD, and this particular one. Right? But we also have Creation Magazine. How many get Creation Magazine? Will you, do you endorse the magazine? Okay, definitely. Excellent. I like that. Right. This is a resource that we, our, our scientists, and uh, put together. It's for the lay people. Now we also have a journal of creation, which is the higher level. They get into a lot of the detailed arguments. It's a little bit above me, but um, so the Creation Magazine. It comes out four times a year, and it goes on by a subscription service, kind of like Netflix that you have. Okay, so every three months, you're billed $7.50. Probably the kids aren't going to sign up, but uh, maybe they would. Want to pass it on? Yeah, pass it. So what you get is an actual hard copy magazine. No advertisement, just a real 
full of, uh, it's like a reader's digest of all kinds of uh, creation evolution related issues. Uh, you get a digital copy where you can put it onto five devices and you can share them amongst five people. Okay, you got a tablet or an iPad or something like that, you can put it on there. Uh, you get the first, if you sign up today, you get the, uh, an issue free, not necessarily a first one. You get one issue free and you also get a free DVD, not this one. Although you can get this one too, but free DVD. And you don't pay anything today. And it works like this, is that you have the forms come around, and uh, it's a tear-off, it's a yellow sheet. Uh, so you put your personal information on one side, and on the other side you will put payment information, either your uh, void check or the information on it, or your credit card information. Please sign it, tear it off, bring it to my wife in the uh, other room over there, and she will get you your DVD and magazine. What are the type of things you're going to find in Creation Magazine? Well, here's an example of black and white twins. Some of you may have seen this one. These are two girls. They are actual twins. How would you like to be your twin? I mean, that's people saying, well, aren't they, isn't one black, one white? How can they, aren't they two different races? How can they be twins? How is that possible? Well, because their parents are brown skin. That's why it's possible. I can imagine these girls had a lot of fun in school. <laughs> this is my sister. Get out. No, it's my sister. How is that possible? Well, but it's obviously possible because it came from the same parents. Uh, we have other books and materials. Unfortunately, I don't have this. Answers book, uh, 60 of the most often asked uh, questions on creation and evolution. We have dinosaur books. Here's one for Institute of Creation Research. Wonderful book for boys and girls of all ages. And other books as well, dinosaur books, etc., and a whole host of other materials. Um, we have French materials, unfortunately not a lot, but we do have some, even this video is in French. And uh, lastly, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much.